Hello there. Let's talk about some exam preparation advice for CompTIA's Network Plus. So first of all, let's just chat about this in general. I am assuming that by now you have looked at part, if not the entirety, of my Network Plus playlist. If you haven't, please go check it out. I've got about 27 modules worth of theory content for you to check out before you worry about your exam preparation. Now, in terms of Network Plus, it is considered the starting point certification for a step into a network administration career. Please be aware, there are loads of extra certifications you can look at doing for networking. More often than not, they are going to be vendor proprietary, or at least vendor specific. But the thing is, once you've learned one network vendor, it's a lot easier to learn another one. Routing is still routing, switching is still switching, and IP is still IP. Now, CompTIA doesn't put any requirements on you to have before you do Network Plus, but they do recommend that you have either A plus or about a few months, around about a year's worth of months experience in the networking space. And although it's not a requirement, I do recommend that you do at least have the A plus knowledge behind you, if not the certification. A bit of hands on experience would be great, but at least have done A plus is my encouragement. In terms of the value of the certification, there's a lot of controversy floating around about CompTIA certifications and if they're worthwhile doing. Without trying to add fuel to the fire, yes, a CompTIA certification is worth doing. It's not going to magically land you a job. Nothing will. Because believe you me, if there was something out there that you do this exam for whatever, it'll guarantee you a job. Everybody would be doing it. So what Network Plus does do for you, though, is it allows hiring managers to easily verify that you have got some knowledge and understanding of enterprise network administration and support and does help them shortlist candidates for positions. But that is true of any and every certification. So a lot of people usually try and collect A+, Network Plus and Security Plus and then move on to something vendor specific. It's affectionately referred to as the CompTIA trifecta. Now, I personally believe Network Plus has a very useful part to play. If you are very new to networking, it can act as a great foundation before you look at doing something like Cisco CCNA. It really does help to have a solid understanding of the basics of switches, routing, and a bunch of the protocols and services we looked at in this playlist, which is also kind of why my Network Plus playlist might differ quite a bit from other content creators and training material because I kind of designed it with the next step in mind. Not only do I want you to be able to pass Network Plus, but I would like you to have a much easier time if you decide to go further into networking. But ultimately, I'll leave it up to you to decide whether doing the Network Plus certification is worth your time, effort, and money. But the fact you're watching this means you're at least considering it and weighing up the options. I will not tell you to do it or not do it, but if you decide to, I will be there to give you advice and guidance as best I can. Now, studying resources that you can check out, besides my videos, obviously, I would suggest that you do check out either CompTIA's Network Plus textbook, their official student guide. You can get it from CompTIA's online store. The author is James Pengley and Juan Guerrero. Very, very good authors. They've done a very nice job putting together the N10009 textbook for Network Plus. Please double check the details, especially during an overlap period. You don't want to accidentally pick up the wrong version of Network Plus and then study content that is not in the exam or done to a different extent than the syllabus. I've been preparing you for N10009 with this series of videos. Another good material to check out if you're not mad about paying for CompTIA's material is the Cybex CompTIA Network Plus Study Guide for the N10009 exam in 6th edition. Todd Lamley is the main author and has been for Cybex for Network Plus for many years. Again, ISBN number is there if you want to check it out. I have always been a very big fan of the Cybex brand, especially when it comes to self-studying. It's written very well and smoothly if you are reading it on your own. Now, in terms of how my playlist aligns with the material, it doesn't really. I developed my Network Plus playlist in my methodology. Everything I did cover is in the material. It is in the exam. But I may have covered it in a slightly different way and definitely in a different order. 
Nonetheless, though, you could still look at my videos and go back to the material just jumping around to the various topics. Another resource you might want to consider, and if you do spend money on at least one of these three things, I suggest it be this. CompTIA's Cert Master Labs for Network Plus. It is available as an individual purchase license on CompTIA's online store, and it gives you some lab exposure and some practical hands-on experience, which you might not have much before you get around to doing this exam. So it can definitely help out for that lack of months to a year's worth of experience. Now, if you want to go and check out any more details about the exam, you can always go and check out the website on www.comptia.org. When you go to that site, you just have to mouse over to certifications, look for Network Plus, and click on the link. At the time of the recording, we are currently in the overlap period of N10008 coming up on retirement and N10009 replacing it. So at the moment, both are listed. After December 2024, only N10009 will appear. But if you scroll down past all this lovely, nice information and fluffy stuff, you'll get to this table at the end, where you can see details like the code, the launch date, overall description, and then details about the exam. You can go and check out all these details in your own leisure. I have got the more pertinent information summarized for us here. So the exam code, as I've kept saying, is N10-009. There is no prerequisite. None of CompTIA certifications require you to have done anything beforehand, but it is heavily recommended that you've done at least A+. At most, you'll get 90 questions in the exam. You might get less. That all depends on the type of question you get. There is a hidden difficulty score that neither you nor I can see. But if CompTIA asks you some more difficult questions from the exam database, you get fewer questions so that your exam experience is fair compared to somebody who has all the easy questions and more likely to get more questions then. Now, in terms of the way the questions are asked, it is multiple choice. So you will be given a set of options to choose from with regards to theoretical questions. The questions might ask simple, straightforward things like what port number is associated with a particular application service, or they might ask you a scenario. Nonetheless, though, you will be picking from a limited choice of options. Now, some of the options are multi-select, where you have to choose two or more options. CompTIA is very nice, and they do indicate to you at the end of the question, choose three, choose two, four, choose two. They tell you to choose more than one option. Then you get the performance-based questions, sometimes also referred to as simulations, in which CompTIA simulates some sort of practical exercise that you would have to do in the field. This is one of the reasons why I do encourage the Cert Master Labs. It is one of the ways to practice for performance-based questions that I can guarantee you is perfectly fine and sanctioned by CompTIA. Then with regards to the time in the exam, you get 90 minutes to do the exam, an hour and a half. Do not worry, there is plenty of time, especially if you follow some of the advice I'm going to give you soon. But it does work out that yes, technically you would have to be doing a question a minute. The good news is though, there are some questions where you'll be able to read it and make your choice in less than one minute. And there are some that you might have to spend a little more time on. In terms of the passing mark, you have to achieve 720 points out of 900. Quite a high score to achieve, but this is one of the reasons why Network Plus is useful in the employment space, because you need to know quite a bit and be able to achieve a pretty good score here. And the certification is only valid for three years. After three years, it expires. Thankfully, though, you can trigger what CompTIA calls a continual education renewal. The three main ways you can go about triggering a renewal. You can go and redo Network Plus, which sounds boring to me. Or you can do a certification that comes after Network Plus in CompTIA's learning journey. At the moment, that would probably be Security Plus for most of you. So if you do your Security Plus sometime before your Network Plus expires, that renews your Network Plus and it will expire alongside whatever date your newly achieved or attained Security Plus would. And there's an entire pathway beyond just that as well. So you could keep your CompTIA certifications valid for a really long time by just doing the next one at a strategic time. And then the third option is to pay a continual education membership fee per year. And there's a variety of things you can do. 
from attending free webinars to sharing transcripts from other vendors that CompTIA recognizes, and that will earn you continual education points that can extend the expiration date of your certification. Now, on to some exam and studying advice. So one of the most powerful things CompTIA gives you is a back button and a flag for review button. This can be amazingly useful if you use it carefully. If you're looking at a question that you don't know the answer to right away, you can come back to it later. You do not have to deal with CompTIA questions as they pop up. This means that you deal with what you know the answer to right away. If you have to think about it, come back to it later after you've got as many questions out of the way as you can to maximize the time available for the ones you've got to think about. This goes doubly true for the performance-based questions or simulations. There's no absolute guarantee, but through all the CompTIA certifications I have done, the performance-based questions and simulations do tend to pop up towards the beginning of the exam. If you're not careful, these can be a massive time killer. Flag them for review, come back to them later. You get way more theory questions that you've got to work through. And if you lose too much time doing the PPQs at the beginning, you're going to be stressed for time as you're working through your theory questions. As I said, try and deal with the things you can get answered right away. And the, the performance-based questions, flag them, come back to them later. It does help. Especially because if you give yourself that time, you can sometimes figure out what a performance-based question needs you to do, even if you've never done that exercise before. If you give yourself that time just to breathe and think a little bit slowly and carefully, you'll be fine. Then, read your question, obviously. Then the options, and if you need to, read the question again. Especially when the question is kind of long, like a paragraph length of a scenario, it definitely helps to go back to the question after having looked at the options to make sure that you are picking the option that the scenario and question is looking for. And while you're trying to figure out what the right option is, there is nothing wrong with a process of elimination. With a lot of IT certification exams, you can utilize the process of that one's wrong, eliminate it. That one looks wrong, eliminate it, leaving you with two or more possible options. And from there, you can go with whichever one is technically more right, given the question put forward. Believe me, this can help out a lot. And try not to overthink the scenarios given in a question. Now, what I mean by don't overthink a scenario is don't make too many assumptions and presumptions. They give you enough information in the scenario to make a choice. If you start making assumptions, you're going to start going too far, and given enough assumptions, presumptions, and conditions, suddenly every option could be right. Now, if you're sitting there and looking at a question and the options, and one of the options is like, if that's true, then that could be true, and if that other thing is true, then that would be right. You've got too many presumptions going along. It's okay to make a small presumption about something, but as soon as your presumption needs another presumption, and another, and another, you're going too far. When I catch myself doing this, I normally go flag it, come back to it later. Believe me, that whole flag it, come back to it later helps a lot because your subconscious keeps chewing on this while you're working forward. And whatever you do, don't let a technical thing intimidate you, especially if it's new to you. You might have missed it while you were studying, or you might not have been as clear on it as you thought you were. Don't let it intimidate you. Slow down, read the question, think it through. You'd be amazed what your brain can work out, especially under pressure. But you've got to give yourself that mental break just to breathe, take it in, and think it through. But be mindful of your time. Don't obsess about your time. Don't keep staring at the clock in the top of the screen, but keep a rough idea of how much time you've got left and how much more work you've got to get through. These exams can be kind of tough, and obviously they are kind of expensive, really expensive if you're paying out of your own pocket. So with all that in mind, there's so much advice we can give you on prepping and studying. So why don't you come over to join us on Discord? Myself and a good friend of mine, Burning Our Stick, we run a Discord server that you can come along to, ask questions, chat with others studying using our material and other people's material, and we'll do our best to help you. The link to our Discord server is down below the, in the description of my video, and I hope to see you there. Otherwise, though, that is all the advice I can think of giving you for studying and preparing for the Network Plus exam. 
The next few videos in this playlist will all be about helping you study for and prepare for the exam, including some practice questions and exercises that I will work through with you. So, check out the next video in this playlist. It might be just what you need to make sure that you pass the exam. Otherwise though, I'll catch you in the next video.